Go make disciples. It is the mission Christ has given us. Today, we're continuing with another CCF Leadership Podcast segment with our guest pastor, Pastor Peter Tanchi. And we're picking up right where we left off by asking our senior pastor your top questions about leading a discipleship group. You know, we receive, we receive um, uh, questions from D-group leaders from our social media and the service that we've run. And um, some of the questions, and I will start with this, um, a D-group leader asks, what are the best practices that you've learned over the years when it comes to leading others to Christ as a leader? You know, what are the things that you did the best? There's no substitute for building relationship. Mm. And that's why we put a lot of emphasis mm. on developing lay men, mm. lay women. When I say lay men, lay women, most of our members are professionals, right? Mm. Teachers, they are, uh, they are not exactly what you call missionaries mm. or pastors. They are engineers, teachers, housewives. Why? Why laymen? Because they have relationship. Secondly, I always like to pray for people that I want to evangelize. Mm -hmm. That's why prayer is powerful. And then I want to make sure I have good modeling. It's hard to be effective when I don't model mm -hmm. Christian love. Mm -hmm. So these are all important. You pray, you model, mm. you build relationship. And then we do not do our we do our best mm. to focus on what the Bible is saying, not my own opinion. Because many times there are issues that will come up. And when issues come out, mm. my practice is I say, let's look at the Bible. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the Bible has to say. <laughs> and then I don't interpret the Bible for them. Mm. I let them read and I ask them. What is the Bible saying? Then I ask them, what do you think? <laughs> then I ask them, what should you do? You see, you let the Word of God mm. engage them. Mm. I don't lecture a lot. I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> you know, I agree with you, Pastor Peter. You know, it starts with really building relationship, that connection to that person. But this is a common problem, Pastor Peter, when you mention about, you know, I'll open the Bible and I will not interpret it, but I'll just read it straight from the Bible. But the a common hindrance among potential leaders, you know, a, a hindrance of um, starting a D group is this. What should um, a leader or potential leader do when, you know, when a member is theologically knowledgeable or someone that is who knows more about the Bible than I do, you know? Um, <laughs> what can a person do when it comes to that issue? You see, that question happens if you don't start out properly. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? To start a small group, mm -hmm. you begin with relationship mm -hmm. with people who may not know Jesus, mm -hmm. but they are seekers. They are hurting so when you start with that, the assumption is they do not know much about the Bible because you are going to evangelize them. So ideally, you know more than they. Now, I also understand sometimes you're assigned people that may know more than you do. Mm. Well, <laughs> if you got assigned to somebody with a PhD <laughs> in Bible, then I suggest you ask him to start his own group. <laughs> or, kidding aside, uh, be humble mm. and say, what do you think? Mm. Therefore, it takes humility mm -hmm. to have people who are in your group mm. who knows more, mm. but you are not intimidated. You are mm. willing to ask them, what do you think? Mm. But the healthy group mm. is usually you start out with people who are more junior, meaning mm. they don't know about the Bible. Yeah, and, and to all our listeners and viewers, you know, we have trainings available for you. We have GLC, and uh, you know, you can start training, you can start learning how to start a D group, basic doctrines, and all that, all that stuff. Can I add, yes. to start a D group, it's really not that hard. Mm. You start 
praying and ask God to reveal to you who are your friends, mm. who are your relatives, mm. who are your office mates, who mm. are your neighbors that really don't know the Lord. Mm. And number two, you pray that God will give them a seeking heart. You don't force people. Mm. This is all about spiritual warfare. Mm. So you ask God to lead you to the right people mm. and then be sensitive. Mm. And believe it or not, once you start praying, God will send you the right people. Amen. You don't have to force it. Amen. Just be available. Mm. You know, I, I can attest to that. I, my wife and I prayed for um, couples and God led couples in our new D group. Amen. Praise God for that. Thank you, Pastor Peter. D groups have people and people have problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the best way for leaders to resolve conflicts within their D group? The best way to resolve conflict is do it the Bible way. What's the mm. Bible way and what is the Asian way? Okay. The Asian way <laughs> is to pretend there is no problem. <laughs> the Asian way is to talk behind people's back. Mm. That's called gossiping. Mm. The Asian way is to sweep it under the rug. Mm. What's the Bible way? The Bible says, speak the truth in love. Mm. So what I will do, if I see conflict, I will approach the person privately mm. and tell him or tell her the truth mm. in love. When I see some people having problems, I will approach them separately, encourage them to meet together. Mm. Remember, we are to follow the greatest commandment, mm. which is love God with all your heart and love one another. Now, if every small group will practice loving God with all their heart and loving one another, conflict will be resolved mm. because you are God-centered and you love each other. But if you don't love each other, you will not resolve conflict. You know mm. why? Mm. Because you may love your own reputation more, so you don't want to discuss difficult topics. Mm. Or you may love mm. the love of men more than you really love the person. So <laughs> if I really love you, and I see something wrong, what will I do? I will not hide it from you mm. because I love you. And if I love you, I'll speak to you gently and in truth. I won't gossip. Mm. So that's how you deal with problems. Me, for sure, you know, some of our listeners and viewers are thinking, you know, we always hear that um, to tell the truth in love, but how does a loving rebuke really looks like, is there a specific process that we follow here in CCF that you wanted to share with our listeners and viewers right now? It's all about attitude. Mm. If I love you, the way I say things mm. will be different. Mm. And love has to come from the heart. Mm -hmm. Many people think, how do I teach people to speak lovingly? Mm -hmm. It's simple. You, Begin with your heart. Mm -hmm. I love you. So I always imagine family members. Mm -hmm. If I'm helping somebody with problem, I ask myself, if this person is my son or my brother, if this lady is my daughter, mm -hmm. how would I treat that person? Mm -hmm. So it all begins with the attitude. If there is love, the words will follow. Mm -hmm. And number two, I always advise never address issues when your emotion is high. Mm. So it's called timing. If I'm very angry, it becomes personal. So it's, not, it's the wrong time. Mm. I'm not going to talk to you when I'm angry. So I need to have the right timing. So attitude, timing, and the tone of voice. Mm. If I raise my voice, it's going to be a problem. Mm. And then my objective. My objective is not to embarrass you. Mm. My objective is not to force you to convince you that you are wrong. Mm. But to speak the truth in love and hopefully you will realize for yourself mm. what God wants you to do. I'm not here to prove that you are wrong, I'm right. But if I see something, I will pray about it. My attitude, I love you. And then, when the timing is right, I will approach you. Now, timing cannot be forever. Mm. Some people are already 
waiting after one year and they have not yet brought up the issue. <laughs> that is exaggeration, right? <laughs> no, no. Timing is at that very moment, mm. if you are angry, you keep quiet. Okay. Then the next day or next week. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm learning a lot as I'm listening to you, Pastor Peter. And I'm sure our listeners and our viewers are learning a lot too. Now, Pastor Peter, as a leader, how much authority does a D-group leader have over the choices of their, we call them downlines, we call them our, our disciples, our Timothys? Example, um, if, a sing, if it's a single D-group, how much authority does a D-group leader has on whom they should date, when to date and um, uh, when to start a D group, you're not ready, you're ready, and um, what ministry they wanted to serve in and when to get married, you know, stuff like that. How much authority does a D group leader really have? I would say be careful hmm. when it comes to dealing with D group members. Okay. First of all, they're adults. Mm -hmm. And secondly, your job is to teach them biblical principles. Once I teach biblical principles, I am very authoritative. Example, if I tell somebody, mm. you should only marry people who are fellow followers of Jesus, mm -hmm. I can say that with authority. Okay. However, I cannot say, you marry this person, you marry that person. <laughs> I don't do that mm -hmm. because... That's not my role. Okay. My role is to advise, mm -hmm. give principles. Now, if they want my own personal opinion, which I've done for many times, mm -hmm. I'll say, this person is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give that person a chance? Mm -hmm. However, I will never mm -hmm. abuse that trust mm -hmm. by telling them whom to marry or whom not to date. Mm -hmm. But you can give guidelines. Okay. If your guidelines are not biblical, you be careful because you are not God. I can only give biblical guidelines. Mm. Peter mm. explained in 1 Peter chapter 5 the role of a pastor. Mm -hmm. Don't lord it over them. Mm -hmm. mm. So you, you and I are not to lord it over them. Mm. I tell small group leaders, mm. especially when it comes to money, mm. don't borrow. Okay. Be careful. Mm -hmm. When you start telling them where to invest, you know why? It can be self-serving. Investing in your own company, that's mm -hmm. dangerous. Mm -hmm. So be careful of that. When it comes to money, when it comes to love life, you set guidelines. I can set guidelines. Mm -hmm. I can say, you know what? When you date somebody, these are the guidelines. Mm -hmm. How close should you be physically? Mm -hmm. What places should you go? Mm -hmm. How do you avoid temptation? Mm -hmm. These are guidelines. But please, don't go to that extent where you start telling them you cannot marry this person. <laughs> What's the reason? Mm. Make it biblical. Praise God. Praise God. So, Pastor Peter, I'll, I'll, I'll shift uh, an, another angle when it comes to you know, conflicts in the church. Um, how should we respond to you know, people or part of a D-group who are tempted to leave CCF because of doctrinal issues, you know, that this is something that is not right in the Bible, that um, this is deemed non-essential, essential. First of all, I like you to disciple people properly. Mm. People who are discipled properly by a good leader, mm. in my experience, will not have that problem. Mm. Because they give their loyalty to Jesus, not to a person. Mm. If they are not discipled properly, they make non-essential essentials. And what's essential, they overlook it. For example, mm. do you realize most people leave the church not because of doctrine? Mm. It's all about relationship. Mm. They got hurt. Mm. What are doctrines that's worth dying for? Mm. It's called the essentials. Mm. Who is Jesus? Mm. That's foundational. I'll never stick to a church <laughs> who does not teach who Jesus is Biblically, the Son of God, the Messiah, mm. the third person of the triunity of God, salvation by faith alone. These are basic mm. by grace. Mm. Holiness. Mm. These are basic. Mm -hmm. But the sad thing is this. Because they are not discipled properly, they become proud. Mm. 
when pride sets in, non-essential becomes essential. Mm. And, and you and I have gone through examples of that. Mm. But the truth is, I just advise a pastor recently. Mm. This pastor was asking advice. Mm. He's from another country, mm. Southeast Asian countries, but he wanted me to mentor him. Mm. And he's tempted to leave his church. Mm. I said, no matter what you do, you should not leave. Mm. You don't like the pastor? Fine. It has nothing to do with doctrine. Mm. But the moment you leave the church, you cause division. Mm. And I said, we are not to cause division. Bringing division to a church is never glorifying to God. But people don't understand this. Mm. So they leave, they start another group, mm. or they tell others to join them. What message are we giving? It's mm. called divisiveness. Mm. It's called factionalism, and that's condemned in the Bible. Mm. So I told him, you speak straight to your senior pastor. Mm -hmm. Tell him your observation. But if it is not worth dying for. My friend, God is using him to sanctify your life. Mm. But you trust God. God is sovereign. God can make any pastor sick and die. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm. In other words, our job is to honor Christ honor the community by not causing division. And that, my friend, is where discipleship comes in. That's why in CCF, one of the core value, mm -hmm. submission to authority. L-O-V-E, yep. L, -O -V -E, L, love. Mm -hmm. What's O? Obey. Obedience. Mm -hmm. Not just to God, mm -hmm. to authorities. Mm -hmm. And if you are in a church mm -hmm. that is causing you to obey something against the Bible, mm -hmm. by all means, that's the wrong church. But I don't think CCF is like that. <laughs> we will never ask anybody to do anything against the Bible. In fact, if any leader is asking mm. you to do something against the Bible, please report it to us mm. because we will not allow that to happen. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Peter, you mentioned something about um, when we're talking about conflict, you know, a, a point of conflict that happened in a D group setting is something that involves money. Um, I want to go to that um, issue. Um, how do. How should D group leaders deal with money matters that involve their members? Example, borrowing money, you know? Yeah. No, it's a guideline. Mm -hmm. The rule is don't borrow money. As a rule, don't mm -hmm. borrow money. Okay. You need money, go to your upline, mm -hmm. tell your leader. Mm -hmm. I have a financial problem, mm -hmm. and this is what I plan to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when a co believer comes to you and say, will you lend me money? Mm -hmm. You are pressured to give them money, mm -hmm. right? Because they are your co-members. So our guideline is this. You must clear any money transaction with a small group leader, mm -hmm. and then the small group leader will tell the area pastor. Why? It is to protect the flock. The Bible is very specific, mm -hmm. especially when you read First Peter chapter 5. Mm -hmm. It talks about money because money can cause problem among believers. And the Bible says never mess up when it comes to money. Don't be covetous. Mm -hmm. Don't take advantage. That's why we have a rule. We don't want to borrow money mm. from one another. However, okay. if somebody's in need, mm. please help them. Okay. You might as well donate. If people is asking for money, that that means they need money, right? Mm. If you are lending, thinking they'll pay you back, mm. I have bad news for you. 90% don't pay back. Mm. So better be prepared to lose the money. So just say, you are you want to borrow, example, 100,000? Mm. I'm really sorry. I can only afford 10,000. Mm. Here's my gift to you. Yeah. You don't have to pay me back. Mm. However, before you do that, you pray, you verify. But it is usually a problem mm. among churches, especially in small groups. Mm. People have asked me, how do you manage? You know, we have what? We have over 14, 15,000 small groups. Mm. By the grace of God, we don't have many cases mm. dealing with money problem. There have been a few. Mm. But by the grace of God, our leaders have followed the guidelines. I think this is where... Um, the skill of a leader steps in, like being sensitive to the need of a member, yep. like being proactive, you know, in knowing the condition of your flock, right? Um, 
you don't have to wait to to for them to ask for help. No, what is amazing is mm. I've heard so many stories how a group member is hospitalized. Mm. The group knew about it, so they rally together. Mm. They help. Yep. But see, that's different mm. from borrowing. Yeah. That this is helping. Yes, yes, Pastor Peter. I think money or whatever help we can give, we need to be as leaders, be you know sensitive to the the condition. No, and the Bible says, watch out mm. for people who are moving from one group to another group mm. to get money. Mm. And we have exposed mm. some people like that. We mm. even show their picture. Mm. Be aware of this person. Why? He goes from one group to another group, mm. borrowing, and then goes to another group. I want to go a little bit personal, Pastor Peter. I'm as a leader yourself, how do you study the Bible and how do you stay intimate with Jesus? There's no shortcut. To study the Bible, you need regularity. Mm -hmm. You need time. You need to meditate. No shortcut. Mm -hmm. So you read, meditate. That's how you study the Bible. Can you say that starting a D group comes naturally from like, how do you really start a D group? You know, how as leaders, we wanted our members to also have their own D groups in the future, right? So how can, what are the most important steps that a D leader can take to inspire and instruct members to start their own D groups? You have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. So to start a D group, it's hard to force somebody immediately, right? Mm -hmm. So what you do, you model it, mm -hmm. you are intentional. So what I do, if I have five men, seven men, I will rotate each one of them, start sharing. Mm. What do you teach? So I give them a few verses. Mm -hmm. I observe them. Then I correct them. The day will come when you yourself, impressed by the Holy Spirit, you will tell them, you know what? You start a group. Now, nobody, as a rule, will say, I am ready. I have seldom seen people tell me I am ready. Seldom will they say, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I always push them a little. <laughs> it's like the disciples. Jesus called them mm. and then he sent them out. Jesus never had a program. Mm. Let's have a three-year program and then when you're ready, I'll send you out. No. The moment he called them, they're with him. On the job training. It's mm. called OJT. On the job training. Mm. Your job as a leader is to Push your members slowly but surely to starting something. They will never start until you nudge them. Mm. As a rule, seldom do I hear people say, Peter, I am ready. Mm. No. Almost all our elders, almost all our pastors, mm -hmm. that's how they started. I told them, Papare, take care of this group. Mm. Hasta la vista. <laughs> so it's like, really teaching them, um, influencing them as they see you do it, really. Like, that's discipleship in action. But I'm beside them. When they start, I'm, I'm beside them. Mm. I'm there to watch them, mm. help them. But then I release. Mm. I think that's an important aspect also in leadership that you know when to let go, you know when to entrust yeah. um, authority over... We err on the side of release. Mm. If you are going to decide, will you be more careful mm. or will you be more bold mm -hmm. in releasing people, authorizing them to teach? Mm. In CCF, our culture is we are willing mm. to take risks on people. Mm. We will release you to teach. Pastor Peter, is there a certain number or that we aim for um, in starting a D group? Is there something, is there a rule that we do? Common sense. Mm -hmm. Example. If you only have one, nothing mm. wrong. Okay. What happens if the person is sick? Mm -hmm. Well, Anna, <laughs> if you have only two and one person goes abroad. Mm. So I suggest start with at least three. Okay. So that it's a community. Okay. And you know, to start a group is very simple. Example, you're my friend. I mm. say, brother, can you invite somebody with you mm. next week? Let's say Bible study. Mm. He invites, or you invite. So three can easily become six. You know why? Each one of them will invite one. Mm. And that's six already. 
And then these six, if the new ones are blessed, they invite their friends. Mm. Before you know it, you have a big group. So start small. Mm. It doesn't matter. One, two, three, but ideally, I would say, uh, don't, don't be shy. If you have only one, you mm. evangelize the person, mm. disciple them, but that one will never be alone. You know why? Mm. He will have some friends. Bring them. So it's not right to say that if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one with this person, I already have, we already have a D group <laughs> as a pair. <laughs> yeah, that is, one-on-one um, -on -one is important mm -hmm. for in-depth, mm -hmm. but just copy the model of Jesus. Okay. Have you ever seen Jesus one-on-one? -on -one? Mm -hmm. Have you? <laughs> no. No. Pete, Jesus, and Peter, mm -hmm. James, and John. Yep. Jesus operated always with a group. Yep. Why? We are wired for community. Mm. Mm. Do you know mental health mm. involves community? Mm. People are suffering from mental health today mm -hmm. because they feel so alone. Mm. Mm. They are with the crowd, but they're alone. Mm. The church, the small group, mm. is God's answer to loneliness and mental health. Mm. Can you imagine that feeling that you are loved, mm. people care for you, they pray for you, Friends, a small group is the invention of God. Mm. That's the early church. And that's the family. But some people have dysfunctional family. Mm. So I am very blessed. I have lots of small groups. I have my family groups. I have my business small groups. Mm. I have my pastoral groups. Mm. I have lots of groups. And I know they all love me. Praise God. And we saw that, Pastor Peter. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Peter, any closing uh, remarks and, you know, parting words to our listeners and our viewers right now that, you know, we've talked about discipleship, an overview of that. We talked about small groups or D groups. And we talked about, you know, leaders um, um, dealing with conflicts and all of those things. Um, any more encouragement that you can give to them? My encouragement is the last few words of Jesus before he left mm. the disciples. Mm. It's called the Great Commission. Yeah. He reminded them, all authority has been given to him. And then he issued a command, go make disciples. Mm. And then he ended with a promise, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In other words, Jesus is saying, I guarantee you, you will be successful. Why? All authority is with me, and I am with you always. Your job is to obey me, and I will be with you. And for me, the greatest joy I have is to see the lives of people change. I cannot explain that kind of joy when I see families, when I see relationships, and when I see lives transform, and they begin walking with Jesus. And then I see them doing the same thing to others. And I see lives transform, another lives transform. What do we call this? It is simply obeying the Great Commission. And I'm sure God will eventually bless you because He promised in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter promised a small group leader that God will have a special reward for a small group leader. Small group leaders, you are very important. You are like the pastor of your family, the pastor of your spiritual group. And your role is so crucial. And God has appointed you to take care of the flock that He has given you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Peter. We've learned a lot. I learned a lot. And I hope you're all encouraged to take on the mission that Jesus entrusted to us to go and make disciples. God bless you. God bless you. If you were blessed by today's podcast and want to know more, you may follow Pastor Peter's Facebook page, Peter Tanchi or Dr. Peter Tanchi on YouTube. You may also listen to this episode on Spotify at CCF On Air. Last but certainly not the least, if you have other questions about discipleship and how to grow in your discipleship journey, you can visit our official training arm, GLC, at our website, 
glc.ccf.org.ph or visit our D-Leaders Corner at the official website of CCF.